We'll take a look at the uh, highest on base percentages since integration in baseball in 1947. Bonds at 444, then Mickey Mantle, um, and then Joey Votto is next. After that, the big hurt, Edgar Martinez, Mike Trout. Trout's up there too, but Joey Votto behind Bonds and Mickey Mantle. Now, Votto getting up there last year, not a great year, but try to come back. I'm talking about uh, his metrics. He's had a couple of statistics that all the good hitters are a part of. It's usually barrels and exit velocity, hard hit percentage, but especially barrels. The most important hitters are usually in that barrels category. Barrels percentage, barrels per plate appearance category. Going on saying, obviously, Joey Votto, the prince of process, is always up on these things. Those are the hitters that you see on MLB Network or ESPN's commercials doing some really cool backflip on Twitter that you look forward to. Your buddies who are forward to fans uh, in that particular city. Those are the players that are the most fun. I kind of miss being in that group. Uh, there was a change, though. Now, Joe Votto did not have – it was kind of a mediocre year last year. He bounced back, though. And actually, I didn't even realize that until our research department looked it up, Case, because I thought yeah. he had a great start, then he fell into a trough, and then his last month was yeah. about the same. But those are the result stats, his process stats, his barrels. There's a big change between his first month yeah. and his second month. And you wonder, can this guy – take a look, here it is. You wonder, can this guy bounce back? Barrel percentage from yes. 4% to 14.7. That's significant. Well, listen, th the biggest thing with Joey Votto right here, and I followed it last year and in these last couple years, when you start seeing slugging where it is 557 on base, that's what the more you think of Joey Votto. It hasn't yep. been that much since 2017 because I think he's gotten so on base percentage happy. He's watching your show too much, BK. He's like, hey, BK <laughs> loves on base. I'm going to start taking pitches, right? But when I saw Votto choking up the way he does, and you saw the last few years, a lot of defensive swings. I've been there before as a hitter. It's the, it's the passive aggressive approach. Approach. You're kind of, let me see it, and then take a swing, right? And when you saw the last 29 games, Joey Votto, when the barrel was, when the barrel percentage is up and the, and the slugging is up, what did he do? He stood up taller. He stopped choking up. He started being more aggressive. So it became the calm aggressive with aggressive being the word first, mm -hmm. right? And I think that was the biggest difference with Joey Votto. And I love that he's talking about that because I think come 2021, he knows that that worked for him after he got benched by David Bell last year for a couple of games. He said, I need to change some things up. I'm interested to see 2021 Joey Votto if he goes back to that same aggressive approach. Look, he's always tinkering. He's a, he's a scientist there. However, you tell me, as you get into your late 30s and your fast twitch is a little slower than it was, Yeah. can you still overcome that and make those adjustments? He used to change adjustments from one yeah. month to, an, to the next. Yes. Can he do that as an older hitter? Yes, he can. And I think that's where your mentality comes into play because – you know, maybe your eyes are a little better and your fast twitch muscles are a little better as you're younger, right? So maybe I can make a decision a little later and bam, I can rocket that ball to left center. As you get a little older, it's the fast twitch muscles slow down. Maybe the eyes aren't as good. But guess what? My mentality has to be has to change a little bit. So for Joey Votto, I think what he needs to change is, listen, I'm going to go up there. Maybe I'll swing at some pitches I didn't normally swing at. But because I have that aggressive approach, I'm going to get to a few more balls. I watched him last year. He had a nephew. He had a home run off my nephew, Zach, and he could still get to the fastball. I, I just think he was stuck in what Sean called it. You get stuck in that in-between mode. The worst place. You, you're, mm -hmm. you don't, you're, you're wanting to take pitches, and then you're a little bit too cautious. Then you're, you're aggressive. Then you make yourself vulnerable to the breaking ball. He hasn't forgotten how to hit. I think the key for him is to get off to a good start in the month of April. Whatever plan he has, stick, stick to it, it and stay with it.